Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to upgrade an unsupported computer from Windows 10 to Windows 11. So let's say you're running out of time for the uh, Windows 10 support and you want to do an upgrade, but you realize that your computer is not ready for it hardware-wise. So you can see here we ran Why Not Win 11 on this Windows 10 computer. And you can see that it says your computer is not ready for Windows 11. And that's because the CPU core count and the TPM version. So it doesn't actually have a TPM on this computer. All right, so to get around this, we're going to use a free tool called Flyobi. So you just download it and run the executable so there's nothing to install. So we're going to right click it and run it as administrator just to make sure everything works. All right, so this tool will let you do upgrades or actually do clean installations. And then when you're done, you could run it again to kind of tweak and debloat your computer. And of course, you could always just run this on your current installation and use the tweaking and debloating tools as well. All right, so to get started, we're going to go to the Home section here and click on this top one here, Get Windows 11, Download or Upgrade to Windows 11. And so it has to use the built-in Flyby 11 app to do this. So this app used to be called Flyby 11. Now they changed it to Flyobi, even though Flyby 11 is still part of it. So we're going to click on Run. Okay, so now you can either download an ISO file from the website, use the media creation tool or a FIDO script, or if you have an ISO file, uh, you could actually use your own, which I have here on this computer. So I'm going to use my own. And I'm also going to check this box here, too, to bypass compatibility and driver checks. All right, so I'm going to click here, browse to my file, which I have here on the desktop. All right, mounting the ISO file. All right, so it's going to start the installation here. All right, so here's something you need to pay attention to. So it says install Windows Server but it's not actually installing Windows Server, it's just the way it has to work here to get this to work. You could click here if you want. You probably want to use this option here to download drivers and updates and that type of thing, but for the sake of time, I'm going to say this. I'm going to uncheck this too, because Microsoft doesn't need to know anything about what we're doing here. Click on Next. All right, so it looks like it passed the test here, so we'll accept the agreement. So we're going to keep files, settings, and apps, but of course you could just keep your files or keep nothing if you want to kind of wipe it out, so that's up to you. And I would suggest doing a backup of your files before any type of upgrade, just in case something goes wrong. And you should be technically doing backups anyways. All right, so we'll choose this option, click on Next. All right, so here's our summary, install Windows 11 Home, because it's just Windows 10 Home, so it's going to upgrade to the same edition. Keep file settings and apps, and then you can change that if you need to. Click on Install. All right, so once again, it says installing Windows Server, but you can ignore that. So this is going to take some time, so I will pause the video and then be back for the next step. All right, so now it's doing some updates, so the computer will probably start a couple more times. Okay, so we're at our login prompt. Let's go ahead and put in our PIN. All right, so now it's going to have to do the first time profile setup. So this will take a couple minutes, so I will pause again and then be back when this is done. All right, so now we're logged into our new Windows 11 desktop. So we have our start menu here with all our apps that we had before. There's even a little section here for your Windows 10 apps. We know these are available in Windows 11, so I'm not sure why I put it there. Okay, so now that we have our Windows 11 upgrade complete, we're going to go back into Flyobi. Run as administrator again.
All right, so now you can see here we have finished what setup skipped. You want to remove some bundled apps, pick a browser, install must-have apps, but that's the same type of stuff that's down here. And then this will take you here as well. All right, so here, if you want to change your computer name, you could come here. You have some other options down here. Open Notepad, for example. All right, personalization options. If you want to switch to dark mode, or let's say you want to put the uh, start button on the left here, you can do that. Default browser, so if you had more than one installed, you could pick that as your default, otherwise it's going to be Edge. AI options, we could see what we have here. And if you want to turn off any of these, you could check the box and turn off selected. I played with this and it's not perfect. Uh, some things work, some things don't, so you'll have to see how it works for you. All right, so you could pick Wi-Fi or Ethernet. So this computer is using Ethernet and it already detected from Windows 10, so this is not really telling you that it's using Wi-Fi, but if you wanted to switch over, you could do it from here. Let's say you wanted to make a new local account or Microsoft account. Let's do that real quick. Say Joe. And you could run this or just click on Create Account. So now if we go to our settings, Accounts, Other Users, you can see we have Joe right there. And it's a standard user by default, and you can make it an administrator if you want, or remove it. All right, let's check out some apps here. All right, so you could search the apps, and then you could also pick one of these categories here. So full, this will show you everything. So let's say we didn't want Microsoft Paint. Let's make sure it's really here, right there. Check the box, remove. Paint is gone there, so you can just kind of pick from everything here or just kind of pick what they recommend. And if you do the GitHub one, it has to download it for the profile. And then you can just go from there. Or you could check this and remove everything. All right, let's move on to experience. Here we have the Let's Configure Your Device if you want to apply that. Quick settings, if you want to turn off anything here. So these two are already applied, so if you uncheck these, it will undo it. So we have Bing search. Let's see if that's working. So it's, okay, so you can see we have search the web here for dog. So let's disable Bing search. Apply. Okay. Now we just have our pictures, and we don't have the web results. Okay, and we have issues. You want to run the disk cleanup. So if you've ever seen the blue screen of death where it has that uh, smiley face, you could have it show details instead, which is probably a good idea. Disable hibernation if you're never going to use it. And anything else off this list you want to apply. All right, Edge. You could disable any of these settings in Edge if you want. All right, so let's try the full context menu. So let's kind of minimize this here. Let's try this. Now you can see we have the Show More Options Windows 11 style menu. Let's try this here. Didn't look like that applied. Might have to restart Explorer for that one. All right, so let's start Explorer first. Let's close File Explorer because that messes things up sometimes. Task Manager. Look for Windows Explorer, usually at the bottom. Restart. All right, so now we have the Windows 10 classic style right click menu instead of the show more options. All right, so that worked. Let's see what else we got here gaming. You want to disable any of this game stuff if you're not a gamer. Privacy settings. 
might be nice to apply some of those. And then ads. You don't really see too many of these ads in the start menu except for sometimes you click on your start button and you see something in recommended for some kind of game or something. All right, so let's move on to installer. So let's say you want to install one of these apps here. Let's say we want 7-zip. Install. So it'll actually go out and download the app and install it behind the scenes. Okay, so let's see if it's there. Yep, there it is. All right, updates. You can check from updates right from here if you don't want to do it from the settings app. Then you can check whichever ones you want and install them right from here. Then we have extensions. So this is where you'll find a lot of extra stuff here. So if you've ever used the Chris Titus app here, uh, it's a nice tweaking utility. So if we click on run, we actually did a video on this tool itself. So I'll link that in the description in case you want to check that out. I'll just show you what it looks like real quick. So it's got to download it. All right, so it has a bunch of sections here for tweaks, configs, and updates. You could actually use the MicroWin tool if you want to do a custom ISO file. And we actually did a video on this as well. And clear your icon cache. You want to create a restore point before you start tweaking things. You change your power plan if you want. Let's say I want high performance. See if that works. Let's just go to control panel to check it out. So it's on high performance, so that worked. You want to do some Defender updates or maintenance, File Explorer tweaks. So if you want to show all the file extensions, which I always do, let's run that. Hide file extension, show hidden files, all that other good stuff. Open this PC. Alright, so now File Explorer open to this PC. We have our file extension shown. Alright, then we could do things like open Windows features if we want to check out anything there, install .NET. 3.5, open PowerShell, run the disk cleanup, remove windows.old if you have it there to get some space back, and some other cleanup actions. We have some power actions here. I'm not sure why this is here because it's easy enough to do from here unless you want to restart Explorer right from here after some changes. Then you can restore all the built-in apps. Uninstall OneDrive, that's a good one. If you're looking to do the 25H2 update, you can see if you're compatible here. So that says it's compatible, and then you could actually do the update if you want. All right, then we have telemetry settings, if you want to see those. So, show your startup apps. So all this stuff is set to run with the computer. And then schedule tasks. All right, so that is the gist of it here. So let's go back home. So like I said, you could either download your own ISO first or have it do it for you. I like to download the ISO file first myself. Uh, browse to where it is. Have it perform the update, and then you can come back here, uh, reopen Flyobi, and then go through the OOBE section here and do your customization, and then you'll be ready to go on Windows 11. All right, so I'll put a link in the description where you could download Flyobi, and then you could try it out for yourself. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.